everybody, welcome to Deep Fried Sonic 2. It's been quite a while since I talked about a game that I liked, and well, Sonic 2 is definitely up there for one of my favorite games. It's been a long time since I played through it. Sonic 2 was the first Sonic game that I actually tried to, actually played through, tried to actually progress far, because I was definitely a Mario kid. My my mom and my grandma both had Wii's, and my grandma had New Super Mario Bros. Wii, which is one of my favorite games of all time. And I played the hell out of that, and just other Mario games in general. I usually played them a lot more, because Sonic was hard. Sonic was really hard for me. Mario in general was just a much more forgiving game, and it was easier to get extra lives and pick any level you want, and the different power-ups and all sorts of things. There's all, there was just a lot more to do as a bad player than in a Sonic game. Sonic games got the upper hand to me in just the much more interesting environments, the meticulously detailed backgrounds that just had a lot of questions for me as a kid as to what this place is and what what's actually going on here. And that's really pronounced in Sonic 2 with the seemingly random selection of zones that don't particularly correlate with each other very well, but they're still cool and interesting nonetheless. I guess that's not a bad segue into talking about the zones, or at least starting. Uh, obviously, Emerald Hill, the uh, Green Hill remake per se, and what they did was took away some of the verticality, the multiple levels, and just made it unbelievably fast. As many loops and ramps and bumpers as possible, and just go for it. I mean, it's rare that these <laughs> particular acts last over a minute, but it's fun, it's cool, it works. It's a great way to bring you into how fast this game's gonna be. Sonic bosses are so hit or miss on whether they're stupid easy or just not fun or interesting. And uh, I'd say Sonic 2 is probably on the weaker side. I honestly think Sonic's one bosses were better, but eh, what can you do? Chemical Plant, where we head into where all of my early attempts at this game ended. Chemical Plant to me just kind of takes Emerald Hill's design philosophy and just makes it bigger and cooler with more stuff. It's still unbelievably fast with ramps and bumpers just throwing you in every which way as fast as possible, but there's so much more room and there's so much more zone to go through. As small as it is, I still think outrunning the camera is one of the coolest things to do in this game. Act 2 is more of the same, thankfully, especially with this enormous hill that spans the entire zone right at the start. It is definitely a tougher level though, with a lot more tight platforming, but still plenty of high speed action. Although this part at the end, I think everybody remembers. Pretty confidently say that most of my early game attempts uh, ended right here, or took most of my lives to where I didn't make it much further. Once you beat the boss, which you can cheese the hell out of by the way, it uh, doesn't get much better unfortunately. In case the small segment of Chemical Plant 2 that was hard enough underwater, let's have a whole zone that's underwater next. Now I'll fully admit as I've gotten a lot better at the game, water zones aren't you know, a fraction as bad as they were and I've actually come to like a lot of these water zones. Aquatic Ruin? I don't know. Something about it just never clicked with me. It's one of those that just comes down to I like the look, I like the music, I like the sounds and everything. I just don't like playing it. And this act in particular is the start of Sonic 2's biggest issue in my mind. The kind of unfair enemy placement. And just navigating this game sometimes was hard for me, especially in Aquatic Ruin. I was really bad at getting through this zone. And there's just seemingly endless numbers of enemies that just pop up out of nowhere was not particularly fun. Like right here, this spring sends you back to the top out of the water. It's the only way to go but it's basically impossible to avoid the flies at the top, and I've never gotten through there without taking a hit. So, why why would you design that like that, where it's seemingly impossible to avoid that? And there's no way to tell in a first time playthrough. Oh, get shit on! Thankfully, we're gonna have a stream of positivity for the next few zones. Casino Night is in my top five as far as just visual designs for a stage. This stage is so amazing looking. 
from the backgrounds, the very detailed, awesome looking backgrounds to the awesome stage designs to the amazing music. Oh, love this stage so much. And it's such a welcome step back from the fun but difficult chemical plants to the sometimes rage inducing aquatic ruin to just have the laid back atmosphere and just screw around in the casino for a while. There's essentially no enemies here and the only one that does basically just blocks and that's it. So this is really just a free run zone. You can just do whatever you want, go wherever you want and just have fun exploring this huge zone. The just sheer amount of routes and places to go and just objects in the stage reminds me a lot of Sonic CD and just filling every ounce of space with something to do or somewhere to go. And the best part is that it's really fun to go through. It's a fun stage to just screw around in, you know? You think stages like these would sometimes get tedious and that tends to be the main complaint with Sonic CD, but no. You just have a blast running through this zone and just getting lost, finding new routes, things you didn't see before. And it wouldn't be a run through of Casino Night without a little bit of gambling. Let's go. I think Casino Night is just one of those rare zones that completely disassembles the Sonic formula and still manages to be an awesome experience. Every classic Sonic game has to have a bouncy pinball inspired stage. Spring Yard set the standard and every game followed. And I think to this day Casino is the most straightforward and my favorite of these bouncy stages. And then all of a sudden we're just out of Las Vegas and in the fucking mountains. Why it's like that, eh, who knows, who cares? It's a fun zone, it's a cool zone, so we're fine with it. This music's also a fucking bop. I remember this being, distinctly this one being my favorite when I first got deep into this game. I always thought the background was kind of cool too with the unique mountains poking through the clouds and the trees and all that. The seesaws, as frustrating as they are to run into them sometimes, are they're just fun. Let's be real. It's the seesaw. They're cool. The zone definitely lives up to his name because you're going to be doing a lot of climbing and a lot of trying to get to the top of these hills. It's a very vertical designed level with lots of up and down ways to go. The underground sections are probably the coolest using the loops to dig your way in to get, it, get down there. The most notable part um, that people remember the most, I'm sure, is the rising lava section. Which is a cool bit where you got a platform and try to uh, do it fast enough to avoid the lava that's rising at the bottom. It's usually not fast enough to actually catch you, but still it's a fun kind of tense little point in the game. Sets the zone apart. Unfortunately for Hilltop, it has the pleasure of having the worst designed boss in the entire series probably. This thing is stupid easy to just invalidate right at the start. There's literally no challenge. I, If even I can cheese it, no problem, then yeah, it's it's a poorly designed boss. Oh boy, this is a good one. I love underground levels. They've always been the most interesting to me, and this one is very interesting looking. Not typical design for these types of levels. This is our spooky level of the bunch, and I gotta say, the color palette jumps out right away. It kinda gives me that Halloween vibe with the greens, purple, and oranges everywhere. The enemies are also very sneaky in this one with the caterpillars jumping out of literally nowhere and the fireflies being literally completely invincible when they flash. Stage hazards are pretty dangerous too with the vines that pop out of the ceilings to try to crush you, the rows of boxes that can be kind of dangerous, the swinging spike balls, heck even the stairs out of the wall try to poke you before you get up. The music, as you can tell, is a fucking bop and fits pretty good with the kind of spooky atmosphere of this stage. So good, in fact, I don't think I want to grab that invincibility monitor, damn it. Mystic Cave is designed to be a very sneaky, tricky level to get through, but they did it just right and it's not too hard. It's not infuriating to get through. I can really see that this many things that can crush you and this many enemies that come out of nowhere, this could be a just, oh my God, awful level, but no, they did a really good job with it. This is one that I feel that they just kind of kept getting new ideas to do for little gimmicks here and there and it just kind of kept working and it's a really cool, there's all sorts of cool things to go see in this level. It's one of my favorites to play through this game. Of course, we cannot get through Act 2 without talking about the notorious Pit of Death. 
by Tails. These three pits in a row, all which feature spikes at the bottom. This one, the third one, has, has a spring at least. The second one here actually has platforms to see your way down and has an extra life at the bottom. But the first pit has nothing. It is only spikes and you will sit there until you die. I'm about to fucking die right here, Jesus. The boss is thankfully a lot harder to just outright cheese. He actually does get to attack a few times, so I guess that's better. Overall, I think I really like Mystic Cave. It has a cool, unique setting with some cool, unique gimmicks and holds up pretty well for being in Sonic 2. And I think it's one of the better zones. All right, here we go. We get to talk about one of my absolute favorites. From the details to the music to the level design, this just overall is one of my favorite zones of all time. So you know I was shocked when people said that they really didn't like this zone, that it was too hard. Which was an even bigger shock, because I never found this zone to be that hard. The aesthetic here is super unique too, being in this crazy oil factory with the oil, you know, the titular oil ocean down at the bottom of the stage as you can sink into. These furnaces that pop the top and throw you higher up are just a cool way to reinvent the spring. And the falling platforms don't do much gameplay wise, but are just cool to be on, honestly. And flying through the air over the fans doing flips will just always be cool. Of course, the music is very unique, far outside of the typical Sonic level style of music, but it fits very well with the oil factory, and that's how it should be, if you ask me. I'll admit the seahorses, aquas, are fucking snipers sometimes. They're just, they just don't miss a lot, but. Other than that, there's really no complaints for me on this stage. Plus the little shooty ball things are cool too. The main danger, fittingly, is honestly the oil itself is falling too low. Will get you sliding down into the bottom of the ocean where it gets really hard to move around. Boss, unfortunately, kind of has a similar problem to Hilltop, but at least you can't just completely one-shot him to where he can't even do an attack loop. You have to sit through at least one loop, and it's not awful, really. But again, it's nothing special, it's a Sonic boss. This is where all young dreams go to die. After just racing through Casino Night, Hilltop, Mystic Cave, and Oil Ocean, you can imagine just how big my head was going into this stage, and how quickly I was humbled. If you've played this game, you know just how brutal this zone is. It's one of the hardest in the entire series. And it's not exactly from the level itself. It's from the enemies. This single zone contains probably the three hardest badniks in the entire series. First of all, these shooting starfish, which are fucking everywhere. These big ass crabs with a huge claw that's basically impossible to avoid. Ugh. And the worst one is these fucking slashers. Oh my god, these things are so bad. The placement is so bad, it's so impossible to avoid so many of these. Like, look at this and tell me that this is good design. And it honestly sucks, because I like Metropolis' level design. I like the gimmicks and stuff. I like the level itself outside of that. The, it's very challenging, very hard to get through, but it's fair, it's cool, it's fun, it's hard. I really like a hard level. But this enemy placement is just so dog shit. Like, oh yeah, who would have thought I got hit right there? I mean, god, it's it's just not, it's evil. Like, what part of that is fair? It just pains me so much that the enemies are so bad because level design idea, this is my favorite, like, final zone of all of them, essentially. Maybe besides uh, Death Egg and Sonic and Knuckles, but like it's really high up there. I love how this zone plays outside of the enemies. It's also special because it gives a reason for Tails to exist, too. He actually helps you uh, go up the screws here. You do double the speed when he's with you, whereas it's halved when he's not. But then, of course, there's just more fucking slicers everywhere. And if I'm saying all this stuff now, imagine how this went for me as a little dumb kid that didn't know how to platform correctly. This stage was fucking impossible. But somehow, I managed to weave my way through it ever so slowly, getting farther and farther. I finally beat Act 2. 
just to be greeted with Act 3. Apparently Act 3 was supposed to be its own standalone act that came after Metropolis, but that idea got scrapped and they just went with Metropolis Act 3. And to say that that was kind of soul-crushing would be an understatement. Act 1 and 2 are already some of the biggest, hardest, most complex acts in all of Sonic. And to throw on an even bigger Act 3 was... Oh my god, this stage is insane. I guess I've harped on it enough, let's talk about some of the positives. And there actually are a few. As I said, just uh, design-wise, I really like the layout and uh, style of these of this zone and all these acts. It's, say again, challenging, but not completely unfair. As far as visuals, I really like the uh, colors, the greens and the browns contrast nicely together. The, uh, the background is very detailed, not as interesting, but it's just cool to look at, I think, with all the different machinery and lights. And the music is an absolute bop. That's one thing everyone can agree on, is Metropolis' music is fantastic and makes this zone a little more worthwhile playing. I gotta say, even with all these criticisms, even with all the bad memories and the awful enemy placement, I still find myself coming back to this zone and enjoying it. I honestly think with good enemy placement, this could have been a enjoyable, well-liked stage. I, it's honestly a shame to see it go down that route where it's only be remembered for spamming enemies left and right and not being very fun to get through. The boss is really tough to not get hit. It's a lot better to just brute force it, honestly. And this is where I distinctly remember all of my hopes and dreams of beating this game, dying. And then when I did beat it, I got greeted with the literal worst zone in Sonic history. I know the general opinion is also negative, but my god, is this zone suck. It's so weird to play through. You just can't even fucking kill enemies properly in this. It's so weird. And it's just not fun. God, I hate it. I hate it so much. I can't even appreciate the one thing that most people can in the music. It was not my favorite at all really i don't know why it's it just didn't sit with me i don't like it very much and i don't think it fits this fucking chaotic sky battle very well either but yeah, that's just my opinion i don't even really have anything to say on the zone i just don't like it at all this i don't mind that it's an auto scroller but just moving around on the plane is so awful to do i i hate it i hate it it's awful it's bad, it's no good, and we're gonna move on. The stupid opening killed me the first time. I didn't know you were supposed to jump right there. Thankfully, Wing Fortress is a much better level and serves as the final, actual full level before the final boss. This zone is only one act and is actually a really long, really big, expansive one going all throughout this massive plane, and it is really tough. And I gotta say, this part here at the bottom, swinging on these poles right next to the jets, the single scariest platforming in this entire game. The shit does not feel secure at all. You're just guessing when you jump. And I think that's what sets this one apart, is that there's so much platforming with no ground underneath you. You one miss and you're probably falling off the plane to your death. As I said, you're platforming pretty much across the entirety of this plane. You cover basically every corner of it to get to the end. And it's pretty cool. I mean, I don't like the color of the plane. I think the uh, brownish is a really bad pick, but that's just me. And the music, I'm not too fond on either. I think it's a little too calm for, you know, final, final full act stuff, you know, business. I don't think that works too well, but Eh, I don't know. This is an easy one to get lost in, especially with these chain parts. There's just a whole maze of places you can go, and, and there's not really many of them that actually you need to go into. You really just gotta let these sliders take you to the end, but I definitely wasted a lot of time on the chains. Ended up finding nothing. The boss was pretty tough, but I remember it being a lot harder for some reason. These little spike platforms that you gotta use to hit the laser, I guess we're a lot harder to sit on when I played it back then. I don't know, I didn't have too much of a problem with it this time, but... This is a pretty good boss fight for your big, uh, 
final one before the full final boss, so I, I like it. I think it's a good boss. After a very long cutscene, we finally end up in the final zone, the Death Egg Zone. Ugh, this music sounded cool for a second and then immediately shut off three seconds in. But it was okay because then Silver Sonic flew in from the ceiling. This version of Metal Sonic is honestly one of my favorites. The buzzsaw back is just so cool, honestly, I love it. And he's definitely kind of tough at first because he's very particular spot you gotta hit him at. You can't hit him right on top of the head or he will kill you. Just like that. One more thing I think about the music would have been, I think it would have been great for the Silver Sonic fight. I don't know why they didn't use it here. It's like a weird distorted song and I think it works pretty good for fighting a metal version of you that's out trying to kill you. I mean, I think that's a good contrast there and it would and it would have served a purpose for the song rather than playing for three seconds in the opening and then immediately shutting off i don't know i like the boss theme but i think this is this would have been a better pick this one was really tough for me it took me a lot of tries to figure out exactly the right spot to hit him in and also to remember the pattern that jump definitely got me the first time i vividly remember that But when you finally beat him, then you go to the right and encounter a very fast Eggman, and he leads you to the true final boss. I'll fully admit I had to look up a guide to beat this. I had no fucking clue how I was gonna beat this at all. And it was even worse when I found out you had to hit him 12 times instead of eight. This is definitely the hardest challenge in the game, especially having to do it with no rings. And uh, yeah, it's it's kind of a shame that the, the best strategy involves just cheesing him and it takes a long ass time to do. But hey, at least the music's pretty good. I like the final boss theme, and when you finally do get through it like I did, took me a long time, but we finally did it, you get your final reward. Overall, Sonic 2 is forever going to hold a special place in my heart, being the first classic game like this that I ever beat. And sure, it may have some glaring negatives in it, and some really bad zones, but overall, I think it's still one of my favorites and just is a really good game. I would definitely recommend giving it a shot, and giving it a playthrough. 